Hey guys, welcome to uh, another video review. It's been a little bit of time since I uploaded anything. Just been kind of busy and also a little bit tired at night. Um, I'm making this one um, on Thanksgiving, so I guess happy Thanksgiving, uh, everyone. I hope you had a safe and uh, enjoyable time with your family. Um, pretty obvious what I'm going to be talking about right now. This is the last designer uh, premiere series for 2018. This is Belle uh, from Disney's Beauty and the Beast, of course, released in 1991. Um, going to try a little bit different uh, location this time. I usually um, do this on the big island uh, in my kitchen um, with a little black backdrop, um, but we got like a new uh, kitchen table. It's a lot bigger um, a lot more spacious and so instead of trying to use the black background it's a little bit kind of burdensome sometimes um, just kind of use the sort of the normal boring backdrop of our informal eating area and see how that works out so um, this is the last of the six uh, and it was released a couple weeks ago and this is the one, of course, that I really want because in case you don't know, um, I'm a pretty big Beauty and the Beast fan. I like to collect a lot of high-end Beauty and the Beast things. And even based on the pictures, you know, I really um, liked her dress, her style, all of that. Um, it was Snow White, Cinderella, and her that I really liked the, the design of. Um, again, I didn't think Tiana and Ariel were very good and Jasmine was sort of middle of the road. But these three I really wanted, so... Um, because she was the last of the series, you know, nightmares had already happened, <laughs> starting essentially um, with Jasmine and then going all the way through. And so, you know, I was pretty nervous to see if I was going to be able to get her or not. Um, and I'll skip all of the horror stories about what happened that night, as they all do when scalpers and different you know, people are trying to do, trying to get it when like basically they overload the Shop Disney website and everything's crashing. But um, I did get her. Um, I got her at around 12, 10 a.m. And from what I read on the Facebook message groups, um, it sold out at 12, 10. So there was a lot of nonsensical shenanigans that I was trying to get through. But um, I must have gotten one of the last couple that was um, available before it, it, you know, it sold out. So really happy that I did get her. Um, I've already taken her apart and kind of adjusted things. So um, we'll stitch this together from section to section. Uh, first impressions in terms of the, the box art. Um, I have to say, I think, you know, part of the reason this series was so popular because, you know, the previous couple of years, I didn't buy any of these. Um, and they still had some, you know, available. I mean, the previous releases just hadn't sold very well, whether it's because of subject matter or design decisions or choices of what they wanted to make. But this one, you know, really kind of ignited the, um, the interest, you know, again. And I think a large part of it really has to do with um, the box art. I mean, they made the boxes really elegant. Um, take a look here on the side and then right over here. So they, they made the box design um, really nice. And in the past, these 12 inch designer series um, were clearly, I mean, I don't wanna, you know, should I say, uh, I guess I have to say it. I mean, they're clearly sort of like the stepchild, you know, of the 17 inch um, series. You know, they're smaller, of course, they're 12 inches versus 17. Um, maybe the quality is not quite as good. Uh, even though all of the eyelashes and hair is rude and all of that, but you know, and then the packaging is so different. It's like, you know, they would come in these clear plastic uh, boxes. Um, you know, it just kind of looked maybe a little bit less classy. And what they did with this release is they sort of designed the box to be essentially very similar to the size and the class of a 17 inch uh, release. So I think that makes a difference. And on top of that, they were kind of imaginative. They thought outside the box and they decided, you know, instead of giving you, you know, princess versus villain, princess and the romantic lead, there was speculation, for instance, that we were gonna get princess and wedding, in the wedding gown, all of this, they really went, you know, I think um, 
off the beaten path and decided to kind of take this rather imaginative um, you know, line of thinking, which is uh, princesses, you know, on the red carpet with a dress, you know, from the decade or the year that the movie was released. And that's a really interesting idea, and um, I think you know that definitely helped. But when you look at this box art, I mean, I think almost universally, with very few exceptions, I think that the box art of the um, princess is like better than the actual doll itself. I mean, the doll is great. I mean, they're stunning, they're beautiful, but this, you know, this um, art is just a gorgeous rendition of the princesses and, you know, Belle is no exception. Um, my least favorite princess in the line uh, because of the dress is Ariel. I mean, whether it's accurate or not to Cindy Lauper, the 80s and all that, I just really uh, didn't like the dress. But the box art for Ariel um, was just, you know, remarkable really really good and same thing with um with bell so i think you know this deserves a bit of attention just to kind of looking at the box I and mean, how beautifully the artist you know drew his vision of bell for instance and other princesses it just has this really distinctive style the way that you know he interpreted the dress it really sells the um the doll before you even open it up you know uh, speaking of opening it up, let's uh, let's do that. So I'm going to open up like this. So here on the one side, as before, you have the movie theater. Um, this is the invitation. This is what the tickets look like. The tickets shows the silhouette of the two of them dancing, which is on the uh, limited edition poster release when the movie first came out. So there she is here. Um, we'll get a better look when I take out the cover so you can actually see her without all the glare. And then on this other side is the movie poster. Okay, you can actually see my reflection with the light. So, um, looking down here at the bottom, you can see the, the details of the dress. Um, again, a lot of glare, so, which looks very, very nice. Um, so, we're gonna skip ahead to the next section after I uh, take off that reflective cover and then we'll get a little more into the details. So see you for the next uh, jump. Okay, welcome back. So here she is in all her glory and with all the paparazzi and their glittering lights in the background. I'm gonna back up a little bit so this is what she looks like. Very, very classy, very gorgeous. Um, I got number 2597 of 4,500. So you can freeze frame if you wish to read about the description of this doll. You have the red carpet. Let's focus on some of the beautiful detail of the dress, the style. You can see it's very much patterned after roses. She has her classic gold look and then the embroidery of the roses, the pink. Um, one of the other YouTube reviewers, I think, I apologize, I, I know, I think he's a like Disney dad, but he has a number after it. I don't know what number it is off the top of my head, but he made this hilarious observation that um, kind of reminded him of like a cheese pizza with pepperoni, which, you know, if you look at that, I think once you hear that, you can't really uh, unsee it. Um, but that doesn't change the fact, even if it does uh, remind you of that, it doesn't change the fact that it is pretty, pretty gorgeous anyways. You can see the little Swarovski crystals. Um, here's her purse. I think this is metal, which is nice. Um, this is, of course, the beast's head. And then you have the chains. Um, nice bracelet. The nice flower here. You now, some people aren't a big fan of that, but I'm okay with that, you know? I mean, it's like, I just think to myself, like, people complain about the flower, but they're okay with Ariel's, like, hot mess of a dress. Like, they're great with her, but have a problem with this, like, <laughs> this uh, flower design. So, you know, it's great. Um, apparently, this is a mini skirt, which means that um, you can take this off and you can actually see her legs. You can see her shoes right there. They're nice and gold. Here it is. Um, so, overall, you know, the dress is great. And then, of course, um, 
She has metal earrings. Um, that's like kind of dangling very nicely here. The hair is rooted. So are the eyelashes. She has a few strands here or there. It's, you know, hang loose. You can see there's a there's a strand right there, uh, which I think is actually pretty hilarious. It's a little bit of propus because um, in case you don't know, the original uh, character in Beauty and the Beast, the movie, um, had this uh, lock of hair that was always falling uh, over her forehead. She would always, you know, put it back in place. And uh, this is sort of like an enduring character trait for Belle. Uh, that she was known for in the movie. And the animators actually um, gave that to her because Paige O'Hara, who's the voice of Belle, uh, that was what she did. And that was you know, what she did with her hair. So I think it's a little bit um, funny or, you know, apropos again that the doll version also has like a few <laughs> bits of hair that's actually, you know, uh, across her forehead. So I think that's really cute. Um, this definitely looks like a gown that you could see, um, you know, in the early 90s. And her hairstyle is very reminiscent of sort of like Celine Dion, uh, in my opinion. If you look from above, let me see if I can get back there. I don't know if we can actually see her from around the corner. It's kind of hard to do that if without deboxing her. Um, but you know, there are other uh, videos out there that have her deboxed. But I think she has a bun on the back of that. And um, again, it's like the, the kind of the big poofy hair, you know, of the late 80s, early 90s. And um, it does remind me of what Celine Dion sort of looked like when she was at the Oscars uh, during that time. So uh, this is on metal as well. And you know, sometimes there are disaster stories where for instance, because of the rough shipping, you'll come and like, you know, the, the chain is like put on backwards. It's you know, even worse snapped in half. Uh, sometimes the, you know, the head is not, you know, properly oriented, um, the earrings are messed up, so um, I can't complain when I got her, all the hair was actually over the arms, and so I had to kind of gently reposition it and tuck it away. Um, but could have been a lot worse, so there she, there we have it. Um, that's Belle from the Disney uh, designer series. So of the six releases this year, I got Snow White, Cinderella, and uh, Belle, and I'm very happy with that. Those were the three that I really wanted. Um, I could definitely pass on the other three, and I heard from various um, rumors that you know they're going to go ahead and do the other ones next year, and that'll be pretty interesting to see where they go because you know Disney was doing quite a few of these movies in very short proximity to each other, and fashion doesn't change that drastically from year to year. So it's not like 1991 versus 1990 is this huge difference. And so you kind of have to you know, take into account other things to make it um, you know, work. And I, I don't know if like say, you know, the 2000s has as distinctive a style as say this 40s or the 70s or the 80s or the 90s. So it'll be interesting to see kind of where they go from here. Um, obviously we haven't done Aurora which is a prime candidate for this type of um, uh, theme. Uh, Rapunzel would be awfully interesting as well. Um, and then, you know, they can get a little bit far afield. I don't think Anna and Elsa are gonna be included, but um, Merida, you know, is out there. Um, Pocahontas and Mulan as well. Um, you know, so there are some uh, avenues, there are some places where you can definitely do something interesting um, with that. So I'm excited to see what they do and when the pre premieres come out, the previews come out, um, I can decide, you know, which ones I really want to go for. Um, I guess I am a little bit disappointed that this year they didn't offer a um, package for a lot of these 12-inch uh, designer releases in the past they would offer during the very first release, the first star release, they would offer a package deal where you can buy all six. And um, if you do that, then obviously you don't have to worry about trying to get them uh, individually week after week, which is not fun to do okay, at midnight. And I can't even complain because um, I'm you know Pacific time midnight that means that there are Disney fans or doll collectors who are doing this at, you know, two or three in the morning if you're in Florida or East Coast time. That's just horrible uh, to be doing that. So 
the fact that you know you can just sort of take care of it in one swift um, click of a button that was really good you know for people who are really committed um, and you know it's fair right because if you don't want to deal with you know basically um, crossing swords uh, every uh, week you know and the stress of that then the price you pay is just buy all of them then later on if you don't like them you can always break up the set or uh, sell them you know to people later on and one of the nice advantages of course is that um, all of the numbers are also the same as well which you know it's not a big deal but it's it's nice to have that and so this was the first series I think in a long, long time where they did not give you that opportunity and I don't know what's gonna happen next year I, I guess I, I tend to think that they're not gonna do that again because they didn't do it with this one uh, so if that's the case I don't really look forward to the stress of that I'm trying to get this um, in the middle of the night so anyway it's a, a little preview for uh, next fall when the madness is gonna start again but one last panoramic shot. I think she's uh, very, very beautifully done. Wonderful um, hairstyling, a beautiful dress, great detail on the embroidery of the dress, very, very good quality. You can feel this. Um, no, they didn't skimp. The earrings are not cheap plastic, they're metal. The purse and the, um, the chain, all metal. Um, very, very nice makeup um, and a very, very uh, beautiful uh, face. And you know, again, I can, I can really tell and I think it, it's very strongly, um, has this very strong stamp where you can absolutely tell the difference in fashion uh, from Snow White, Cinderella, and Belle. You can clearly tell the decades they're, they're from. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, and even though I don't like the look, I think Tiana is also pretty, you know, has a pretty um, distinctive look. Um, I just don't know if that's what she would wear, like if she was a real princess or like to say an actress, right, who's going to go to an opening night or the Oscars or the Emmys. Like, would she show up in that, uh, that get up? I mean, maybe. I was hoping they would have given her something a little bit more elegant and also still be distinctive from that style. I mean, she looks like, she, you know, Tiana looks like she's going to like an MTV awards show or something like that. Whereas here, you can really, you know, see Belle dressed like this, you know, to go to the Oscars or to go to the, the movie premiere. And I know that the conceit is they're going to the opening of their movie. Um, but when, when you look at this compared to, you know, say, what Snow White and Cinderella looks like and everything like that, I mean, Tiana's just like, a little, and to my mind, looked a little bit almost too casual. It was hard to buy. Um, I think Ariel, even though I hate her dress, I think that dress also has a lot of, uh, is also very distinctive, you know, like kind of Cindy Lauper, 80s vibe. Um, they did a good job of that, even though I don't personally like that, but that's maybe just because I don't like that part of the design or the fashion from the 80s. And I think, in my opinion, the weakest one was kind of uh, Jasmine. I mean, there's a lot of people who love her in terms of her look and her face and her hair, which is great. I mean, I, I love that too. But in terms of the choice of design for the dress, I just don't really see it being that distinctive. Um, I don't know when it was released. I thought they were doing these one a year. So if this was 1991, um, it must've been like a year or two later, I think 92 was when Aladdin came out. And so again, you have this problem was like, well, is there that big a seismic difference in fashion between 1991 and 92 or 93? Not really. Um, and so her dress in my mind did not really scream 90s to me, I guess. You know, I mean, I think there was a lot of uh, Middle Eastern culture. They were trying to you know, kind of in, in, incorporate that into the design of the dress. But the dress just wasn't as distinctive to me. And I think of the six, in my opinion, I think Jasmine has the um, least impressive in terms of the, the dress. Like, do you, can you look at Jasmine's dress and immediately think to herself, 1992 or 90s? Um, you know, I mean, I don't care about dresses that much. Um, so maybe that's why I don't. I mean, there might be those of you out there who can. You can probably tell, there might be experts out there who can tell just by the dress what year it was released. But Jasmine's dress didn't scream that to me. Whereas, you know, you can definitely tell the Grace Kelly Cinderella look and the Snow White, you know, kind of 30s, you know, flappers look. And then, of course, Belle, you know, Celine Dion, 80s. And then, you know, Cindy Lauper, Ariel, and then MTV style Tiana. I think they did a lot better job sort of marrying, you know, that distinctive dress with the year the movie was released. So here's to seeing what the interpretations are for, again, uh, characters like Rapunzel or Moana 
Uh, Sleeping Beauty I'm really excited about because I think she does come from the past. I think past princesses are a bit more exciting because you have that history. You know, there's like the more, it's more, I don't want to say ancient history, but you know, it's a few decades back where the styles were definitely a lot more different and you can appreciate that a lot more. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to what they do with Rapunzel uh, because of her long hair and how they're going to sort of incorporate that into a modern um, movie premiere setting. And then of course, Sleeping Beauty, those are the two, Aurora and um, Rapunzel are the two that I'm really looking forward to for next year. So until then, um, I hope you enjoy that and take care guys.